All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're gonna go around the yard and I'm gonna highlight a number of fig trees that are really impressive this spring and talk about a number of the reasons why. If you guys are really into Brabas and you're in the Pacific Northwest, United Kingdom, or you just value the Braba crop in general, this is gonna be a great video because I'm gonna highlight, like I said, four or five varieties, but all of those I believe to my knowledge, are producing an incredible amount of Brabas, or at least Brabas that I didn't know it would actually produce reliably. And so right here in front of me is an Adriatic fig called Prosciutto. And so there's a lot of names for the Adriatic figs because they're so darn tasty. Um, and the Adriatic fig, just if we define it really quickly, is a fig that resembles very closely to the white Adriatic that was grown in California commercially many years ago. It's a fig that's found all over the world, all over the United States. And again, it has many names because it just is so darn tasty. And a lot of growers that are obsessed with figs and grow a lot of different varieties love these particular varieties. Some of the names that I grow, as an example, are Strawberry Verte. Uh, right now I'm growing an, a JH Adriatic that's in the ground. Uh, we have a Blanche de Du Cezanne. I have a Verdino Del Nord from Tatiana. I have a Verdino Giacomo. I have... Um, a Rockaway Green from Rockaway in New York. So there's a lot of these and I'm growing a lot of them for good reason. Um, basically to find the best tasting one uh, that's for my climate. And specifically, prosciutto is that one so far. And the reasons for that is it produces a, a really high quality fruit more consistently it seems than the other Adriatic figs I've grown. The reason being so far is that it tends to dry on the tree a lot better than the other varieties. And because it dries quicker and more consistently, it produces a higher quality fruit more consistently. We've talked a lot about this variety in the past, but what's new to me this year, obviously the form has been set up beautifully. This is such a great tree. And we did a video on training figs, and this is really the demonstration tree for that. But what I'm seeing this year, after we've had it in the greenhouse basically for the last month, month and a half, is that it's producing Bravas and a quite a good number of them. And this fig has about eight or so Bravas on it this year. And I actually recall taking off a few off of the tree in the spring at some point, because I figured it would just be too much for this tree in terms of the size of it. Now I know just how beautiful and how good the form is, I probably could have left those on. It's also producing an incredible amount of main crop now that's forming on these branches. So um, not only is it doing really well with the Brabas, but it's also doing really well with the main crop production. And in general is proving to be an incredibly productive tree. That I think is the main thing I wanted to mention. The Brava crop adds a whole nother dimension in terms of production. Obviously it ripens earlier, it ripens about 30 to 45 days earlier than the main crop. It's less in number and typically not as tasty as the main crop, but the Brabas on an Adriatic, I have tasted um, for my own trees of different varieties. They are very tasty and very comparable to the, to the main crop. Among the other Adriatic figs I have, my Rockaway Green is producing a couple Brava, but it is a younger tree. And the only other one that I can think of that is producing a reasonable crop of the varieties I already mentioned is the Verdino Del Nord from Tatiana, which is also in the greenhouse. And that one I believe is a reliable Brava producer as well. But this one here, if we can get right Bravas, which I assume we will, uh, probably in the next 60, probably less than that actually, sometime in June, I'll get Brabus to ripen here off this tree. But then if I can get them to ripen again next year, um, I would consider this a very consistent Braba producer and would be, in my opinion, one of the better ones that you guys could grow. Um, and again, it would be a very productive choice. Right next to me is another tree that also has good Braba production that we've talked about last year. And you can see some of the Brabus here on this Smith in that Smith, yes, Smith is producing a reliable Brava crop. Here's actually a pretty decent shot of the main crop forming there. And then of course the Brava there below. Here's again more Brava. And um, between the three Smith trees I had or have, and 
this is last year I'm talking about in 2022, they produced about 30 Breva across the three trees and they all ripened and they all ripened at a very high quality. So for me, I'm like, I talk a lot about this variety till I'm blue in the face, but it just keeps continuing to impress. It's not meant to be a, a, a Bifera variety and meaning that it is not supposed to produce Breva, but this is the second year. I'm gonna get right Breva off of this. For me, I would consider it a reliable Breva producer. I don't know why. I haven't heard many other people say the same thing. Could it be something that I'm doing? I don't know. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with the strains because I have two different sources of Smith and I all of the sources of Smith go back to Becknell. So I don't really believe that uh, I have some special Smith in, in, in any regard, but uh, yeah, for me, it's just been impressive. Another impressive fig after We've trained it really well. We grafted this one here to raspberry latte. It's called Hatib de Argentile. And uh, we took a little bit of a hit actually when we took this out of the greenhouse. There is some sunburn. I don't think it's extreme, but it is gonna be enough uh, that it's hurting this tree a little bit. And it did actually drop a couple Brava since we took it out of the greenhouse. One I actually knocked off, but in general, this is, in my opinion, proving itself to be again, another Brava producer that I just didn't expect it to be. I had no idea. I don't know many people who actually grow this fig. It is a very, very good fig, just like Smith. And for me, just continues to impress with unbelievable main crop production. It's growing so well on this raspberry latte rootstock. And I find it just is better grafted so far, or at least raspberry latte is certainly a fig that you could argue um, is a really, really nice rootstock. Um, I should probably have a raspberry latte planted in the ground and then propagate from that to then use that as rootstock going forward in the future. I think it really does make the best rootstock that I can think of. Uh, let's look at some of the other trees now. There is over here in the greenhouse, I am impressed by my Norella in here. Again, the form's also beautiful, just like the two trees we've already looked at. I'm hoping it's gonna impress me further as a lot of people have told me in the past about Norella and saying that it is a better hardy Chicago than a lot of the others that you can grow. And I would agree with that so far, but it definitely is in my opinion, uh, a lower peg in more humid climates compared to Azores Dark, um, compared to Malta Black, compared to a, a couple others I'm growing. And the reason for that is Norella is a larger fruit. It produces a larger fig. And when you have larger fruits, they typically don't concentrate because there's a lot more water in them. And so in humid places, if you can get them actually in a drier, drier weather in humid places, the figs will start to dry on the tree and lose that water. When you're around 50% humidity or lower, they'll lose water. But if the fig is so big, there's a lot more water that has to kind of come out for it to concentrate. And so smaller figs do taste better on average. That's like pretty much in my, my mind a fact at this point. Um, here's an interesting tree as well that's really been one of my favorites for years that we talk about a lot, but people don't really catch on. I don't, I don't know what it is. I know you guys in the channel do, but there's a lot of collectors who, I have just don't understand they've yet to kind of appreciate this tree, but this is white triana. I do have actually two of these planted in the ground, both of which have survived the winter this year with the uh, winter protection that we gave it, uh, gave them both. We bent over the branch. In fact, there is one single branch. I just bent this over yesterday uh, to give it more light and have it growing away from the other. We bend them over and then cover them with wood chips. It's pretty much as simple as that. And that was great winter protection for this tree. Um, I find for whatever reason, this fig grows so much that it actually doesn't overwinter that well. It doesn't lignify as good as I'd like it to. So it might not be as hardy as some other varieties that are similar to this. White Triana is very similar to like Atriano, Unknown Mitica, Canadria, uh, Laterola, Lynnhurst White, um, there's so many figs actually very similar to this, but this one in my mind, it tastes 
far beyond the other so far that I've had. Uh, the reason being is that it gets more of an intense berry flavor. This fig is also very, a very different eating experience. So if you want something different, a different variety, I would go with this uh, because it's like eating a jelly fig. It's so much better than most honey figs. And additionally, it has a nice berry component, this particular variety. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm seeing this year, even on just this little tree, that by the way, there is still buds up here um, that should have produced Brava, but it got killed or pruned or whatever the reason is that are missing at the top of the branches. But in general, this fig actually is producing 15 Brava. I counted them, um, which is nuts. <clears throat> I don't think it's meant to produce this many Brava, uh, but I do know it is, it is a good Brava producer, um, and that is reliable. As most of those figs I mentioned are, like Unknown Medica, you know, even Canadria produces a nice Brava. Safrari, actually right here next to me, the hardier version basically of this, uh, is producing Brava as well. They're just good Brava producers in general. And um, for me, this one here is fantastic so far for so many other reasons beyond the Brava. Uh, it's like a mid-season cold Adam, for goodness sakes. It's so good. But... It also is now producing this crazy amount of Brava, uh, which if can be consistent, um, would be really impressive. Um, but I don't think it is gonna be consistent. But again, it is, it is pretty much a standout this spring. And so I thought it would be worth talking about. In terms of uh, one other fig, I would say that this Moro de Caneva is really, really impressive. Um, this is a fig that has overwintered now for two winters and it comes from this one trunk that we managed to overwinter and then it grew from this point here all these scaffolds that <clears throat> then again overwintered this year and i'm hoping what's i'm thinking is seeing i'm seeing here is that these higher buds on the branches are going to swell some of them for whatever reason have not but you can see all the way down the branches lower down it's actually doing its thing on this branch, you can see at the tips, it is growing, but there is two branches that are just weird. They're alive, like this branch is alive, and this one here as well is alive, but it's just, they're not growing for some reason at a higher point. But you can see they're very slowly starting to swell as it gets higher. And so I'm hoping I will see more of these Brabas on here. But so far, I'm already seeing quite a few and as I've said before, this is a great commercial fig that uh, not only is great commercially for its main crop, but for its Brabas. I'm counting four on that branch, two over here, so that's six. Then we've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then this branch just goes crazy actually with a lot of Brabus here at the higher points of the branch because that's just what they do. So if, if these branches here are gonna leaf out, they're gonna produce Brabus. Like I see the, the Braba buds here on the branches, which could mean that this tree is gonna produce like 20 Braba, which is, <laughs> which is pretty nuts. And this is definitely a reliable tree in that regard. Um, it is just one of my favorites in general. Again, this thing just keeps t continuing to impress me um, year after year. I learned that it is from, there is a place called Caneva, Italy. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, and the real way to say it, I think, is Figo Moro da Caneva. So we're going to try to make that change um, consistently going forward. But in Caneva, it is a northern place in Italy, actually. And it's so far north that the climate actually translates really well to this location. It's pretty, it's even kind of close somewhat to Venice, but also to the Dolomites. And so there's mountain ranges there. And a lot of that cold air, I assume, comes down from the mountains. And it just makes total sense that this fig would do so well in so many different places because it's so well adapted, it seems. Um, so yeah, in general, actually here's another Brava down here that's forming. And I wonder how far down the branches the Bravas can form, which is not really, it's not really supposed to do that, but hey, sometimes you, 
it does like that way triana is producing fruit even way further down the branches which is just crazy to me so those are the five trees i think here guys that are just outperforming the others so far this year really excited for the season thanks for watching guys hit that subscribe button hit that like button we'll catch you for the next one and check out the blog figboss.com take care guys